coffee. Alright, what's poppin' people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are doing well. Welcome to today's video, which is a Chelsea news video. More accurately, a Chelsea transfer news video. Now, now, whether Chelsea can do business in January or whether they can do business in the summer, all news generally still stands. In fact, it usually stands more so than assuming deals can be done in the winter. Let's get back to reality and remember how hard it is to execute January transfer deals for a multitude of reasons. So welcome back, there's three stories I want to talk to you about today. Apparently, one of the main reasons why Chelsea have targeted Wilfred Zaha a lot, or so much, is that they want his versatility as a forward and really, maybe even play him as a striker. Whoa! New. Also, Court Offside have published an article about Chelsea making a bid for Isco. No Isco, no Disco. Apparently the Spanish say that. He's a player. And also, apparently the Olivier Giroud deal is off, which I'm reluctant to believe, but I'm still going to report on it anyway. Before we do get into the news today, remember to subscribe to Football Therapy if you are indeed new to the channel. Make sure you click sub. You click that bell notifications icon and you like the video to help your boy out. And also, if you want to see more of yours truly, click on the link in the top of the description, Yan Plays, my second channel where I play video games. Right, let's start on Olivier Giroud. Peut-être c'est un problème, non? Giroud's contract is up in the summer. He needs to play football. He's leading the line for France, surely, in the summer. He really doesn't look like he fits at Chelsea and probably won't play much football again. Makes sense for him to go, right? Well, apparently it's been reported that he is unlikely now to leave in January. Apparently Chelsea won £5 million for him. I know he's getting on a bit, but he's a World Cup winner and he's still in excellent shape. Come on. The whole, the whole idea of buying Olivier Giroud mid-season is to bolster your campaign and get a lift with a goal scorer, a big physical threat, a guy who can do knockdowns, a guy who can combine with a number 10. Giroud is all those things. Surely he's worth 5 million for the remainder of the season and, you know, putting him on a year contract after that. Surely. But allegedly clubs are not interested in paying that and would either wait till the summer or not bother at all. Which to me is madness for all the reasons I've just stated to you. Anyway, I'm not sure I could still see the exit of Giroud this January. Someone has to seek great value in what is a great player, provided he suits your style and you need a little bit of a lift mid-season. Watch this space, I'll keep you guys updated here on Football Therapy. Just make sure you're subscribed. So yet again, it's been reported that Chelsea are looking at Wilfred Zaha. Apparently, for a long, long time, Chelsea have been looking at Wilfred Zaha. Zaha wants out of Palace, he wants to play at a bigger club, and ideally he wants to play Champions League football. He nearly went to Arsenal, but maybe looking at them now retrospectively, he might be happy that he didn't go to Arsenal. And retrospectively, Arsenal might be annoyed that they paid 72 million for Pepe and didn't get Zaha. But then again, they did have a bid of 70 million turned down for Zaha. Still, I'm of the inclination to think that that price tag well, it might be the same or maybe even go down slightly. To be honest, Crystal Palace wanted 100 million. Probably not gonna happen for a player who doesn't really score that many goals and he is playing for Crystal Palace, no matter how good he is. Yeah, anyway, apparently Chelsea do really want him and have wanted him for a long time. This is probably more of a club target than someone like Frank Lampard. But the thing is for Wilfred Zaha, he is incredibly direct pacey and he's got a load of trickery. Kind of all suits the way Chelsea play and he's good at combinations in the final third right. But it's not just his play style that fits Chelsea. More importantly, the reason, apparently, why Zaha's been targeted so much is his versatility. Zaha can quite comfortably play on either flank as a winger, as a right winger or a left winger. He can play as a forward in a 4-4-2 as a striker or probably more a second striker in that system. But he can also play as a centre forward. The other day against West Ham when Frank Lampard deployed Christian Pulisic as a centre forward, it's that kind of moment there where I think Zaha would do a lot better there and you could keep Christian Pulisic in the number 10 or on the flank where he plays better. Zaha wins a lot of fouls and he's quite strong when he runs. When you've got a penalty taker like Jorginho, just like Crystal Palace have Milivojevic, it's great to have someone winning a lot of penalties in the box. Zaha's your man for that, right? Just like Eden Hazard was. So Chelsea will be looking at that and his versatility, but will Zaha want to come to Chelsea and be the ultimate utility player, I guess. Who knows? But I kind of get what Chelsea are targeting Zaha. If you're looking at it not for just a brand name and just superb ability in one position, and you think, yeah, Pedro's going, Willian might go, it's good to have another winger that can play striker, especially when you're not a 
thousand percent convinced with Mishi Batshuayi? That kind of makes sense. I personally feel like Zaha wouldn't be my first choice, but maybe he could surprise and do really well at Chelsea. You can see how well he can perform for the team, and he can do clutch moments, even if he's not scoring clutch goals, where he wins the points for the team by just going an amazing run and scoring himself. I feel like if you put him in a team in Chelsea with the right coaching, he might get 10 to 15 goals a season, as opposed to 5 to 10 or whatever he usually gets. I have a feeling 10 is the most he's ever got. And if you're moving him across the front three more and he's getting more assists, that's really, really good. Remember, he's 27 years old, he's really, really acclimatised to the Premier League, and you could have a good three years of Wilfred Zaha and still flog him to like Italy or MLS or something for a bit of money. So I get it. There's a risk with bringing in someone like Hakem Ziyech, who's a really good player and a lot of people preference him over Jadon Sancho in terms of how much he'd cost and his different skill set to Jadon Sancho. But for me, it's a bit of a risk. Even though Jadon Sancho has been playing his top flight football over in the Bundesliga, I feel like as just an English player, he'll know exactly what the Premier League's about and he's less of a risk in terms of playing in that environment. But Zaha, Zaha is the complete safe bet on top of all that. You know he's been battered in the Premier League for years, he can run past people, he can do it, he can deal with it. So he's a sort of known quantity and with that, your money's relatively safe because you know what you're getting. A few quotes regarding Wilfred Zaha. The independent claim that Frank Lampard's side are now in open talks with Zaha's agent Federico Pastorello. Pastorello. It's claimed that Pastorello has spoken with Chelsea's director of football, Marina Granovskaya, about a potential transfer next summer. Eh? Looks real, right? Hodgson's commented on this. As I've said on many occasions, when you have a player that's quality, it's not surprising they're coveted. But he's a Crystal Palace player. He's under contract to us. There's no one here anxious or desirous to sell him. But sometimes bids come in in which they're very difficult for the clubs to deal with. Essentially, Roy Hodgson saying, yeah, people always want him, bids are coming in, there are talks, I'm not worried, maybe he'll go. I think Hodgson's ready for him to go, but he's also expecting a bit of money to come in to get a creative player to replace him to score goals. Anyway, keep it locked in the football therapy regarding Wolf Zaha. I will keep you guys updated. Finally, let's talk about Isco. The Real Madrid player, <laughs> the Real Madrid player, that has been in and out of the team, but is incredibly talented. The Spanish international was the future of Real Madrid at one point, but as they get more young players in, I mean, they get the likes of Hazard in, they've got Bale still, but Vinicius Jr., Rodrigo, all this, all these kids basically coming in. What happened to Asensio? Anyway, really, they probably should have sold Isco a couple of summers ago and made loads of money for him, like 180 mil or something crazy. Still, he's a good age and he's a very, very talented player. Apparently, caught offside of a reporting that Chelsea are in for him and maybe they can seal his signature for 50 million pounds. This is being reported originally by Don Ballon. Now if you look at 50 million pounds and how decorated Isco is as a player generally, that makes the 72 million pounds for players like Pepe look a little bit more silly but again it's a risk, you don't know what Isco is going to do in terms of how well he's going to perform in the Premier League. But I'm starting to think Chelsea have a relationship with Real Madrid now openly in terms of being happy with each other with transfers. Real Madrid got their man in Eden Hazard and although their price raises to 130 or 150 million, they still did signature for 89 million. Yes, I know it's still a really good deal for Chelsea considering he had 12 months left on his contract, but they got him, they got the deal done with Chelsea and they took away uh, Mateo Kovacic, who probably wasn't going to play for them. Chelsea paid, what, like £40 million pounds or something for, for Mateo Kovacic, or 45. At the time, Real Madrid receiving that for a player that probably wasn't going to play for them again, they were very, very happy with that. Again, in hindsight of how Kovacic has been performing for Chelsea and his general level of talent and ability, it looks like another really good deal for Chelsea. But I don't think there's any particular reason for Real Madrid to feel burned. So there might be an open relationship there in doing business, one they'd probably like to keep open. So 50 million pounds is still a lot of money. Remember, Real Madrid have spent a lot of money last summer. So if Isco's not playing that much and he wants away and he says, all right, I'm happy to go to Chelsea, I'd sign the contract. They're like, all right, 50 million guys, should we take it? He's not really, you know, shall we? Personally, I'm not sure. I'm of the state of mind, I think Chelsea have enough mids, attacking mids, especially with the return of Ruben Loftus-Cheek. But a lot of Chelsea fans and a lot of you guys disagree with me and say, yes, Chelsea could really do with an attacking forward midfielder. And I'm open to that. So maybe someone like Isco might start the disco, eh? No Isco, no disco? Again, not something I started. It would be exciting, wouldn't it? Because he is pretty galactico, isn't it? And for 50 million pounds in a Chelsea shirt, 
Fuck yeah, man. Like I said, watch the space. I'll keep you guys updated. But even if he has no particular interests or original links to Chelsea, he'll see it's an exciting project. He'll know if Frank Lampard is. And he'll see, like, you know, South West London. Yeah, hey, why not? Who knows? Maybe even Ed Nazard's got on his ear and been like, Chelsea's wicked, mate. Go check it out. Who knows? Anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below about all these players I've spoken about. Remember to follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. And click the link in the top of the description to subscribe to Yan Plays and help me out on some FIFA 20 gaming. That's it from me, guys. You lot, enjoy the football, and I will. See you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.